Today we're looking at the Neutrik ConvertCon, the world's first convertible XLR connector. You can reconfigure them from input to output with no tools or adapters. Let's get into it. These videos are made possible by the incredible people whose names are on the screen right now. Join them by becoming a channel member here on YouTube or join the crew on Patreon linked below. There's different cool rewards for both and different tiers to choose from. The folks at Neutrik sent these ConvertCon over for us to try, so thanks to them for watching and once again getting involved with these videos. This is not a paid ad and they've never asked for anything specific to be said or done with their gear, so thanks again to Neutrik. The ConvertCon literature specifically suggests that these would be ideal uh, for adapter kits and emergency problem solving situations. With that in mind, I couldn't think of a better place to put them than on a Sound Tools cattail. The whole concept of the cat snakes, tails, and boxes is to pass audio from one to another easily so you can solve problems in the field. It can be necessary sometimes though to adapt one or two of the channels on those input or output boxes at each end if you want to run bi-directional signals. Things like inputs from an artist on stage who also needs a monitor return, or maybe on-air talent who needs an IFB returned alongside their lav mic inputs. I'm sure you can think of plenty of examples uh, specific to what you do. So we'll be swapping channels three and four of this input version of the cattails, but you could do this to any adapter or cable just as easily. The ConvertCon are a direct replacement for the Neutrik XLR XX series connectors down to using the same boot and strain relief. Ah, damn it. So we can just leave the original ones on the cable right now, and that saves a little bit of time. The connectors themselves are rated the same as the XX series, handling voltages up to 50 volts with a max current of 16 amps per contact. They also handle cables from 3.5 to 8 millimeters in diameter and up to 14 gauge wire for those contacts. You might notice when you go to solder these that the contacts are a little bit shallower than usual on them, so you'll need to pay close attention to the provided assembly guide to prepare your cables properly. In this case, going from a well-made XX connector to a ConvertCon, all we had to do is trim down a few millimeters from each wire and they fit right in. From there you just solder as usual and there shouldn't be any big surprises. A bit of flux, a good iron, and these are just as easy to assemble as any other Neutrik product you're familiar with. So with them installed, you can see the action that happens when converting back and forth. They are a bit stiff uh, the first few tries, but that goes away once you use them a little bit. You can see the magic happening here and how the pins end up in the right place simply by flipping the orientation of the connector for each position. You'll also notice how the contacts are left a bit more exposed in use than you might be accustomed to. Getting to some questions, length was a concern for some folks for sure. You wanted to know if they're going to fit into your console's doghouse. And that's a great question because that's where adapters get used a lot in those types of tight spaces. So here they are next to their traditional counterparts and you can see the extra clearance that would be required. If you're working in tight spaces, this could definitely be an issue, but less so than what you'd get if you were only using traditional turnarounds as your other option. Durability was the next big question though, and rightly so. When we talked to him last, hey, filming? Dave Ratt told us how Sound Tools is taking inspiration from Neutrik in their efforts over the years to simplify their connectors by reducing the number of parts that go into building them. Adding parts to any design adds complexity and usually more opportunity for failures. So the glass filled nylon box made out of the same thing as the Neutrik connectors are already made out of. And um, we've just got a whole series. What we want to do, what I want to do is 30 years ago, that's what an XLR connector looked like, right? It was heavy, it had like bits. Like if you take that out, this falls out. And there's all kinds of junk in there and kind of progressed to the old Neutrik and then it went to the, the plastic Neutrik and then it's called the way come up to a very lightweight, reliable. The reliability and is increased and the complexity has decreased. Same thing with the connectors, you know, the set screws get all lost. So what I'm trying to do is the same concept of 
having uh, folded metal, kind of sharp yeah. stage block. This is the standard, and kind of do what Neutrik has done, or with uh, the connectors with the stage box, and make something that costs half as much. It's got the reliable reliability, the durability, and um, it's just a good design. I mean, the way that these are built is um, much more functional. Here, it's very difficult to get a circuit board unless you hand wire them into something with opposing connectors. And this design is split design. So we've got a whole series of that. So with that in mind, how does a convertible XLR with moving parts hold up compared to the XX series that we know can really take a beating? The most common failure modes I've seen on real jobs over the years have pretty much fallen into two categories, and that's either been crush events, things like a forklift running over it, or something really heavy gets dropped on it, or strain events. And that's usually where one of your cables gets snagged by maybe another department's equipment, like a scissor lift, uh, or it's just being yanked on real good by an overambitious stagehand without realizing that it's connected or stuck on the other end. And if it is stuck on something like the leg of a stage deck, this can absolutely shear the thumb release off of NL4 connectors. It can pop the connector clean off the cable as well in a lot of cases when enough force is applied. So have we learned anything by destroying all this nice gear? It's really important to note that during the hammer test, music was playing through both the ConvertCon and XX series connectors the entire time without any dropouts or connectivity issues. In fact, although both connectors do appear to be in pretty rough shape now, they do both still pass audio perfectly. There's a lot of questions actually about this uh, Dante enabled cat box and no, this is not an official product. Uh, there's been enough questions now though that I will, I promise I'll open it up and do another video on it. It's essentially just an Avio output adapter paralleled onto three and four. And I borrowed the RJ45 connector on the end and soldered that to the Avio. It, it's very simple, but very handy for setting up tests like this. So how do you think the ConvertCon performed? Maybe pause now and leave your thoughts in the comments before you hear mine. At this point, I do need a needle nose pliers to make this slide work. And one of them, uh, this one up here is pretty well dented and also has a little crack in the housing here right up at the top, so that's split. But if this had have happened, if this type of destructive activity had happened on a gig out in the middle of nowhere, I still would have been fine. There's even a good chance that if these were deployed somewhere out of sight, I wouldn't have noticed that they were broken at all until I went to strike everything at the end of the gig. Another thing that's important to remember, and we're going to illustrate it here now with some other XLR connectors, is just how good we have it with the quality of XLR connectors across the board these days. They're incredibly robust. They are built simpler now than ever before with fewer parts, and they can take some seriously harsh conditions and abuse, and you'd still have every confidence that beyond the physical wear and scuffs, there won't be a whole lot to worry about once you check that the cable is still intact.
No signal issue. A little bit of scuffing. Nothing. Same again, a little bit of scuffing. Pro connector. Handle that just fine, right? Get him out of the way. Next up. Get the county, the county connector. Right? County connector. County connector. Fine. And this is where I think we'll see the problem if it's not plugged in. This is a county connector. Give it a good whack. Still good. Still good. So our connector is all robust. This knockoff. Not a real point trick. Where? Oh, uh, not a real matrix. Split the boot. Still kept the signal going, right? This is loud. Don't do this without uh, ear protection, right? All right, still good. Still good. Here we are for another. A little bit worse for wear, but nothing. Nothing I'd be that concerned about just yet. And then we'll give another like that. Let's see. Did that? Yeah, just a scuff, really. Let's see the other side. Fair, there's nothing plugged in, right? Right right there. That's gonna be... Oh, see, look at that. Wow. Devastation. Okay, and then we've got, of course, another standard, another favorite in the industry. Lots of set screws and fun parts to drop and keep track of. Oh, this has dented it. Whack it right on the right on the tag there, right? Still good. Right? That looks jacked up, I bet you. Yep, still just absolutely not a problem. The plywood's had it though. Oh! Did that killed it. Wow. That killed it. See? Nada. Oh no! I think we just restarted the sound bolt. We did, did him a damage. It's fine. So, didn't kill it. It's in bits, but. So the failure that we saw with the ConvertCon is down to the wraparound slider almost entirely. Although it looks really dramatic when the nylon sliding boot cracks or even shatters when it's struck, having broken these and continue to use them without that full slider, I'm wondering how necessary the whole thing actually is. Could we ever see something closer to the Speak On Thumb slider replacing the full wraparound boot? They're obviously concerned with covering these longer pins when you've got it in the input configuration uh, with the receptacles exposed and all the way out there. Uh, but the full wraparound design seems like it could potentially be reduced to something closer to what they're using on the NL4 and other latching designs in the Neutrik inventory. So with that all in mind, my thought on these is that they are an absolute win if you need them. They're obviously a specialty connector and Neutrik never intended or marketed them to be a mainstream replacement for traditional modern XLRs on every cable. That's just not the point and I'd personally rather see a connector like this exist for adapters, turnarounds, problem solving tools like Z cables, and especially these cattails, I will absolutely be buying more of these in the future. So let us know down below, what do you think of these ConvertCon? Are they worth it for the utility and the flexibility? Or would you prefer to go a different way if it was up to you, if these were going in your kit? Would you choose traditional adapters? Would you make your own turnarounds? Would you use something like this in specific cases, but not others? It'd be really interesting to know. 
A huge thanks again to Neutrik for sending this stuff over. They're incredible sports about not asking or uh, demanding that anything specific be done or not done or said. I feel really bad destroying anybody's equipment in order to make a video. But these were questions that came up from a number of different people who were genuinely on the fence about not buying them or not, but exactly how best to use this tool when they do buy it. And I think that's the approach most serious professionals will have to any connector, any tool. They've all got their strengths. They've all got their weaknesses. Right now, this is the only convertible XLR out there. Uh, certainly the only one that I've ever seen, and I'd be happy to put it on a job tomorrow. So thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody for helping out, especially brands like Neutrik, and I'll see you in the next one.